all right so having understood so this is the question which we just discussed is kind of one of the one of the, one of the top questions which you can say from this particular chapter so if you understood this it's, it's kind of kind of you're good at it let's look at the next question question number seven aircraft s leaves position 36 north 10 degrees east at 15 22 hours and flies a rump line track of 90 degrees true at the ground speed of 470 knots until it reaches the 13 degree east meridian when it turns onto a track of 180 degrees true at a ground speed of 460 knots aircraft t on the other hand leaves position 30 degrees north 10 degrees east at 15 22 hours same time as aircraft s and flies a rump line track of 0 900 degrees true at a ground speed of 150 knots so you have two different aircrafts the start time is given their individual tracks are given so now we have done for a particular aircraft now they have given two different aircrafts so same diagram you just draw two different aircraft and analyze their tracks now what is asked at which uh, which aircraft reaches position 30 north 13 east first at what time does it occur and give the position of the other aircraft at this particular time so i'll give you again i'll take like maybe a full five minutes uh, go through the question and draw a diagram and analyze it and i will join you once once you're done or when you're stuck all right so we have two different aircrafts the aircraft s starts from 36 north 10 degrees east and aircraft t leaves from 30 degrees north 10 degrees east what can you say about the positions of aircraft a aircraft s and aircraft t uh, they are on the same 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 position aircraft s is from 36 north 10 degrees east and aircraft t is from 30 north 10 degrees east be very careful with how you analyze the points huh? uh, they are on the same meridian of 10 degrees east but they are on different latitudes right so both the aircrafts are in the northern hemisphere let's draw the diagram so whenever you draw the diagram make it a point to draw diagrams big as possible because if you draw small diagram and if you try to put all these things into it at the end of the day it becomes like a mess so try to draw as as big as possible which will definitely help you and this is the equator let's mark the direction straight away and let's mark the position starting position or the or the de departure of air, uh, location of aircraft s is 36 north 10 degrees east right so that is i'm drawing a bit higher here 36 degrees north and 10 degrees uh, east right now what is the direction of travel of the aircraft s initially so from there what is the aircraft s doing it is traveling on a rump line track of 90 degree now what is that a rump line track of 90 degree what is the meaning of that traveling towards along along a parallel of like which parallel of latitude is that 36 degrees north 30. so from wherever it is it is traveling east right so probably i will i will be happy if i mark that starting position here because i'm moving that direction i want space here right so this is the starting position of aircraft s right so i'll mark this point as a this is the aircraft s so it's traveling towards east right now yes so this meridian is what is 10 degrees east so aircraft you can see s starts from 26 uh, at 36 degrees north 10 degrees east and flies a rump line track of 90 degrees true at a ground speed of 420 knots until where until it reaches 13 degree east meridian so you can see this is 10 degrees east meridian therefore 13 degrees east is going to be the to, towards the east of 10 degrees east so the question is actually in line with our understanding so it is 13 degrees uh, east meridian so aircraft s starts from position a and it travels till it reaches or uh, intersects 13 degrees east meridian what is the ground speed 470. 470 knots so the ground speed is 470 knots now what happens after that until it reaches 13 degree east meridian when it turns onto a track of 180 degrees true 
vessel. So what direction is the aircraft turning? It's turning right. So that understanding is also important. If I say the aircraft at this point is turning left, it means it is now tracking northerly. So it's right means it's right turn is southerly, right? So it's tracking 180 degrees at a ground speed of 460 knots. So the aircraft now turns right onto a southerly track and we don't know how far it is going to travel. That is not given, but it's just making a, uh, it's just traveling southerly from there. What's the ground speed? 460. Yeah, so ground speed reduced by 10 knots. It became 460 knots now. Now let's look at what aircraft T is doing. So aircraft T leaves position 30 degrees north on the same 10 degree east meridian. Right? So the aircraft, I just draw it here. This is the, so this is the 30 degrees north latitude, 10 degrees east meridian. So this is, say, say for example, point P. So I'll mark this point as B. The intersection at 13 degree uh, the east as point B here, so A to B, and this is travel of aircraft S. Now, the travel of aircraft T starts from point P. So let's draw the aircraft T here. This is the aircraft T. It starts from position P. And what is the next thing? Uh, and it flies a rump line track of 90 degrees to a gap, which means the aircraft T is also traveling easterly first along 30 degrees north parallel of latitude. Right? And at a ground speed of 150 knots. Right? So it's traveling east. You don't know how far it is traveling, but it's traveling at at 150 knots. So what is the what is the departure that you got? 180 in the cost 36. 145. 145. Okay. 145. This distance is 145 nautical miles, right? And therefore, uh, what is the time taken for AB? So the distance AB, let's find time AB. Yes, we have the speed here, we have the distance, right? So time is called distance by speed. Distance is 145, we said, so 145 nautical miles. And speed is 470 nautical miles per hour. Therefore, what is the answer? Uh, so it's 18. Uh, 0.5 minutes, correct? Yeah. So the aircraft will take 18.5 minutes to reach here. You see, when you say the speed of the aircraft is 470 knots, it means that the aircraft is traveling 470 nautical miles every hour. So to travel just 145 nautical miles, it's going to take only uh, one third of it, which is almost 18.5 minutes, right? Now, what about the distance BQ. The distance BQ, as you know, is not a departure because we are traveling along a great circle track, right? So how will you find out the distance BQ here? You are on 36 degree north and making a chill at uh, of 6 degrees towards the south and reaching 30 degrees north, which means what's the chill at here? 6 degrees, which is 60 minutes. And I can convert that 60 minutes, uh, sorry, which is 360, Six. yeah, 360 minutes, right? 6 into 60, 360 minutes, which can I convert that nautical mile straight? Yeah. I can. Why? Because it's along a, along a great circle. Therefore, this distance is 360 nautical miles. So we can do a direct conversion here. One minute is one nautical mile. Therefore, 360 minutes is 360 nautical miles. So we have again the distance here. And uh, uh, yes, so what is the speed? So this is 360 nautical miles, sorry not here, the same distance but we are looking at this direction therefore the speed is 460, so what is the time taken from B to Q? This again distance of 360 nautical miles over a speed of 460 knots. Again it is going to be less than an hour, more specifically you can, I can just keep it 46.9, that's okay. 46.9 minutes. Therefore, what is the total time taken by the aircraft S to travel from A to Q via B? The total time taken by aircraft S is how much? How do you find out? 18.5 plus. Yes, 46.9. So what is it? Sixty-five point four minutes. 
what is the thing? If I can prove that the time taken by t to reach q is less than 65.4, I'd understand that t has reached here first. If it is more, then s has reached here first. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So let's find the time taken by the aircraft t. Yeah. How do you find out? First, you find the distance here. So departure in nautical miles is again chillong in minutes. So what's the chillong in minutes? I can take the same chillong which I had here okay. over here, which is again, again three degrees in minutes will become three to sixty, which is one eighty minutes. Right? It's in minutes multiplied by cosine of the latitude, which is thirty. So cos thirty is root three by two. So find out 180 to cos 30 so much. So it is 155.188. Right? So you can round this off to 155 itself. I can take 155.2. That's fine. So it's 155 nautical miles. So this distance is 155 nautical miles. Uh, the speed is 150 knots. So can you find out the time taken by aircraft T from P to Q? So time is distance by speed. is 150 knots. Yes, find out the time in in hours and minutes. Uh, one point zero three. Yeah, so one point zero three zero three second to sixty. You get okay. Fine, you can take it one hour itself. Uh, not that much significant. Uh, which means the aircraft S is twenty three nautical miles from the final position. Uh, when the aircraft T reaches its final position. Aircraft S is 30, 23 nautical miles away from the final position. Or in time, you can say three minutes away from the final yes. position. Right? These are kind of the higher end questions in departure. So if you can kind of go through all these questions, that it becomes more easier.